and I wanted to talk with you guys on the way why I actually suck at riding motorcycles and why maybe you do too. So we're back on the road here in Greece and it's again incredibly hot. That's why I'm riding in short pants again. But we're making our way to the Pindus Mountains and a beautiful archaeologic site there. And I wanted to talk with you guys on the way why I actually suck at riding motorcycles and why maybe you do too. Um, why am I opening up this dialogue? It's... Uh, I, I see that in myself that when it comes to riding skill um, I am hitting a ceiling and I've been hitting a ceiling hard for uh, the past months and my learning process was always quite slow uh, but that's because I, I never took an advanced riders class and I'm completely teaching this kind of stuff myself. Uh, it's how I always did stuff. I, I teach myself surfing, snowboard riding, languages, skating, BMX riding, uh, all that kind of stuff. And I always got like, with, with some stuff I got really good at it, with other stuff I got mediocre at it. And motorcycle riding is one of those things. And at the same time, I started to see that many people actually seem to have the same issue. So, what do I exactly mean by me not being a good motorcycle rider? There are different perspectives in what you can interpret uh, that. I think uh, the most people would go, are they fast on a motorbike? And I would say, compared to someone who goes on track, I'm not fast. And also, I'm someone I always ride as fast I can, as I can see the turn. So, I would say in that regard, I am fine with my skill as my, uh, my learning curve is hitting reason, <laughs> basically. And that's where it stops to continue to grow. Uh, even though I have to admit there, also due to my size, I'm quite a tall individual. Um, the, the proper riding technique sometimes suffers a bit, like how to properly lean off the bike, how to properly ride the motorbike with your foot pegs, how to uh, hold onto the handlebar and the throttle properly. But it's not just limited uh, to that, it's also other regards. For example, uh, the safety of riding. Uh, I would say I'm, I'm good at evasive maneuvers, I, I got that down, but my, my problem lays in uh, the braking, especially on not ABS bikes. Um, I would say I most likely uh, it depends on the bike, but on, on a dual disc front setup with, uh, without ABS I can get quite a lot of the braking power out of it. But as soon as we're talking single disc I have a hard time feeling into it and I probably get around 60-70% to 70 of the braking power out of it. And that now sounds like incredibly bad numbers. <laughs> Uh, but that's, I would say, average, especially if you uh, look at statistics of accidents and how much braking uh, and stopping power m people manage to get out of their bikes. When it comes to other stuff, like tricks on a bike, uh, not that versatile as well in that area, I, I can power really, but I'm not confident really in bringing it down again. Uh, of course, when it's up, you have to bring it down, but I'm always scared of getting a speed wobble out of that one. And um, I, I don't know how to uh, operate a motorcycle when traction is gone, basically. Like, I, I cannot really drift a motorcycle or anything. Uh, I can do donuts in a parking lot. Um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm starting out this discussion from. I feel like the reason that's holding me back, why I'm saying these things, and probably also something that maybe a lot of you can identify with, is uh, I'm hitting the self-taught ceiling and um, I would need advanced riders training to push through that and I'm very interested in that, those things actually. Like I want to uh, push through these barriers and become an actually really decent motorcycle rider. 
Also because I have a motorcycle YouTube channel and feel that as a responsibility in front of you guys. Uh, that also includes actually the mechanical skills around a motorcycle, actually working on the bike. That's a big one. And I want to learn these things also because I want to be able to hand that down. I want to learn these things to show you guys and also to show you guys in a way that like everyone can do it. And I feel like in the motorcycle community, there should be a bigger emphasis on motorcycle riding training. Because all the problems I've just described, I see in a lot of riders when I'm riding on the road. Like especially on this trip, you see big motorcycles, loads of power, and then the people absolutely ripping it on the straights and then tippy-toeing through the bends to a degree that I almost like drive into the rear of their bike. Um, I know you should not ju um, judge people by like the side of their tire or anything, uh, as that is not a good indicator of like actual riding technique. But I've been walking around in the last town and uh, had a look at the big CC, big power bikes. And most of them had almost half of my hand on, on the side of the tire. To some degree, you actually have to lean a bike, you know? Uh, so it, it really looked like the people are basically steering the bike completely with their handlebars, which you can do up to a certain speed. <laughs> and I feel like this whole theme is a lot tied into ego, uh, because a lot of people buy very, very capable motorcycles. Um, and those very, very capable motorcycles stand in the way of you actually learning how to ride a bike. And like on this channel, I've been over and over reviewing again, actually quite small motorcycles with very little power. And even though they were most of the time not really handling focused machines, I could tell how you could use proper counter steering, how you could lean off the bike, how you could lean uh, the bike underneath you, how you had like proper braking technique. And getting into these things was a lot easier and a lot more manageable. And um, this was very apparent in the, um, in the classic 350 review even though that's a that's a cruiser uh, um, in in the turns that bike was walking all over the interceptor as with it's a lot more manageable amount of power on the back roads you could really emphasize on riding a motorcycle properly and in and in contrast I, I was also realizing when reviewing bigger bikes uh, how much harder it is to properly ride them how you're supposed to and with the proper technique. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely a discussion to be had and also what can be learned from that which then can be transported back to the bigger bikes and how to actually go about this. So, wow, the landscape here on our way is just unbelievable. I think I just saw an animal cross the road, a, tur a turtle. Let's have a look at it and let's watch out a bit until it's across the street. Ah, oh, have a look at this little cutie over there. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's scared of me, he's hiding. Wow. What an impressive little am animal. How wild to see such an animal in the wild. I'm wondering how old he is. I mean, those things, they become older than humans. He is almost off the road, then we can continue, because then he's safe. Okay, he made it. Okay, let's get going again. So, let's get back to the topic at hand. How I and how also you can improve our riding.
so I had to take a little bit of a break as it was absolutely too hard to exist as a human here in Greece. And yeah, back to the topic. I think to kind of answer why I suck at motorcycle riding and why many other people suck at motorcycle riding, it is important to uh, be aware of the reasons for that and how that in the first place kind of happened. Like, how did that develop? And um, also, what is the definition of being good at motorcycle riding, to kind of have a good comparison? First of all, I would say being good at motorcycle riding for me uh, would be defined as being decent in a certain sub-niche of motorcycle riding, as you cannot be good at everything. You know, there must be a trade-off. And also, I wouldn't go for like a crazy skill level. Uh, I would say someone who's decent at it, as were all have lives, jobs, are not, I don't know, born riding motorcycles and everything. Uh, so I think that's a good level uh, of like understanding. And that goes for all kinds of sub-niches. Would it be track riding? Would it be uh, off-roading? Would it be stunt riding? All these things. I feel like in, in motorcycle riding there's a huge culture of uh, over-exaggerating. Um, as like your skill on a motorcycle is I feel like for many people very directly linked to uh, their manliness so it, it's something that is also very visible when doing repair videos because if you do repair videos you have a very small amount of people that give actually good advice because they know what they're talking about and you get a bunch of people just yapping whatever thing it could be that partially doesn't even make sense uh, because there's this culture of like giving your input and being like oh yeah it's this and that and and you kind of have that with all riding things also with like driving fast and driving fast is a big one because uh, I feel like many people feel the pressure to do that and then especially when it comes to younger riders you have literal groups who drive like maniacs uh, I, I sometimes witness that and um, really often the rider technique then is absolute dog shit like it's really really bad like uh, I feel like also modern safety features have really uh, did a number on that like uh, a bike that really comes to mind is the Kawasaki uh, Z900 because the Kawasaki Z900 is a very good bike and to be honest it's too good it has so many electrical features that help keep you on the road uh, that I sometimes when I follow people who ride that bike uh, from the people I know, I get a headache from watching because you have people downshifting in the turns, then just like letting the clutch fly while completely leaned over, and the bike saves it somehow. And uh, completely off body position in the attempt to like get the knee down and everything. And I, of course, don't really know what I'm talking about, but I also, uh, but I think I know enough that I, I can see when something is very clearly wrong. And I think a lot of this comes actually from upgrading too soon. I think we have this culture around either already starting on a very big machine. I mean, we Europeans are a bit limited in that, but especially in America. And we Europeans also have that with people later doing their license and also then upgrading as soon as possible as their uh, A2 time is over in Europe. Because Many people then get bikes that they're not really capable of handling yet and in the end it's like about improving, like I mean they're able to handle them, they are able to ride them and they're able to have some fun with them, but not really in the way that they would like continue the progress as a rider. And uh, many people probably are now upset in the comments being like, oh yeah that's such a big amount of bullshit, but I mean it really makes sense because if you look at what motorcycles are, motorcycles are quite dangerous. Motorcycles have an incredible uh, power to weight ratio. And then compared to cars have like one more axis that they basically have to be controlled on because they only have two wheels. A lot more goes into riding a motorcycle than into riding a car. And when it comes to riding a fast car, no one would instantly be like, oh yeah, I'm buying a GT3 RS and I'm going onto the track. Like, that would be insane. 
that's kind of what we do with motorcycling because they are also quite affordable. Well, that has gotten less the case over the years, but many people instantly go into these very powerful bikes. And I already mean mid, uh, mid-weight motorcycles with that, because even a motorcycle with 90 to 100 horsepower, which would be considered a weak bike, has such an amount of power that it gets pretty hard, for me at least, to learn the proper technique um, when riding. Uh, of course, then stuff like that would be become easier if you would do an advanced rider's training, but people need to spend the money on that and I'm guilty of this myself that then I sometimes spend the money on other stuff especially when money is tight and so on I yeah a lot of my stuff is like too under budget basically why am I even making this video I'm making this video because I want to change that for myself and want to take you guys along and uh, like showing how slow or how fast I'm improving in certain areas uh, so what is my goal? How do I want to be a better motorcycle rider and how do I define that for myself? I already mentioned that you kind of have to pick something that you need to get better at and uh, that's quite hard for me so I, I kind of want to improve on certain little aspects all over the place which is maybe not the way to do that but um, I want to uh, be first of all a safer motorcycle rider and do an advanced safety training when it comes to braking and uh, cornering and handling dicey situations on the road. Um, something that really plays into that because the skill set is I think probably a bit similar is I want to uh, actually get a bit into track riding in a way that I can afford it so maybe on a cheap supermoto track or something because I would really like to achieve a proper um, body position and uh, as a result of that maybe when going quick and having the proper line being able to uh, drag knee um, as a result of proper body position I need to really point that out also I would kind of like to improve my off-road riding to a degree uh, that I am confident in deep sand and can survive deep mud that's basically because I, I somehow get along in, in deep sand, but uh, not too well. I, I actually want to be confident in deep sand. And um, I want to not be completely scared of getting so badly stuck in deep mud again like I did in Iceland. Because uh, I, I managed to improve my off-road riding by, through learning by doing a bit. Uh, I'm able to like climb a steep hill climb that's like at a very steep angle with a lot of like soft um, ground but like that's for me not enough I, I definitely want to work on that and one thing that I want to learn which maybe sounds a bit stupid I would like to get into stunt riding a bit I would really like to be able to uh, ride a wheelie and also I really would like to be able to do donuts like on a parking lot and drift a motorcycle like properly I uh, the inspiration kind of comes from another channel uh, there's this guy he's called uh, John's Motor Garage he, he sadly uh, started making less and less videos but um, he makes pretty cool videos in general and he has that stuff kind of down and it looks so satisfying and it's something that I would love to learn I think also something that's important to keep in mind when, when talking about this and the, the different things I want to be able to do on a motorcycle that I just mentioned that the window of what people can actually do is a lot more to the not that skilled level as you would think as a lot of people talk a lot of shit and that combined with the whole ego trip of upgrading as quickly as possible to a motorcycle uh, that they desire and also, people really like to brag about how good they are in certain things. That's why I'm basically opening up here, being honest, saying like, oh yeah, I this is actually where my skill level is. Uh, so that you guys know from someone who makes these kind of videos, who uploads on YouTube, uh, like what a, re a real and comparable picture actually can look like. Because I've heard so much shit from other riders. I've uh, also not just from people my age, also from older riders. And um, like I remember, I was on my Morocco trip and I got back and I rode over the Nurburgring, 
and um, like the Nurburgring it was 10 degrees it was wet it was slippery I the bike slipped all over the place uh, I once almost lost the front and I left the Nurburgring in slightly under 12 minutes which is say so, uh, okay then I got off the track and the amount of motorcycle riders that made fun of me uh, for oh yeah you almost didn't lean over the bike or look at your tire all that kind of stuff uh, happened quite a lot and most of the fuck I think I rode into the oh shit I rode into the wrong one <sighs> fucking hell okay this is the one Yeah, and the amount of ridicule I've gotten after crashing two times almost on the track and actually a guy I met earlier uh, from Spain, uh, he actually gave me his GoPro for the cheek crash that day on the Nürburgring and broke his arm. And he wasn't going that quick. The, the track conditions weren't that great. And everyone then always seems to have a big mouth, but I would... You know, something that also stops me from progressing is the fear of crashing and dying, which is pretty a realistic fear. Everyone who thinks, oh yeah, motorcycles are actually not that dangerous. No, motorcycles are fucking dangerous. Like that's 100%, I can sign that. Um, and when you go fast and start to pushing it and you're on the street, I really quickly realize, yeah, I'm not going into my last 30% because there's a guardrail that looks very, very terrible to hit. And, um, yeah, I think a good way around that is to have a small bike where you can do a lot on with very little speed and also to actually go to the facilities that help you learn these things and also to invest in your uh, like uh, slow speed maneuvers. I can really recommend uh, the content of Moto Jitsu for that. I, uh, I've been trying some of his drills in the parking lot and really helps and um, while while not being too critical of yourself it's also important to reflect on it a little bit to a degree because as I said if I now continue the way that I'm going now I will be in 10 15 years I will be the guy who's like oh yeah I've been riding since 10 15 years but I still have the same level as I have now um, I, I feel like I need to put in the extra work to to break through that ceiling and that's for me okay to admit. I hope I was able to give you some realistic uh, points for rider skill and how good someone is actually at riding and so on and a few thoughts about that topic. We're actually now on our way to Athens because I, I skipped out the sightseeing on the way now because it's so hot and not really all that desirable and I have to honestly admit I'm a bit done from the whole trip in general. So I will now just make my way to Athens to, to get a bit of a break in. I now arrived here in my hostel. This is my room. All my roommates are currently not here, which is nice. It's a very loud and wild hostel, but um, I'm doing fine so far. I now have to do some organization of how it's going to continue, which you're going to see in the next few episodes. So, see you soon.